Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. So this actually the second part of my original filming talking about my experiences with the CFA and actual exams. So if uh, you haven't checked out the first part where I comment on uh, the comparisons between the two and why I went for the CFA exam after getting the actual designation, uh, check it out here. And uh, this video will talk about like uh, my 10 tips on uh, from uh, studying for all of the CFA exams and uh, the actual exams to help you guys on uh, learning and hopefully help you pass uh, this exam. Talk about st uh, study strategy for the actual exams and uh, the CFA exams. Overall, I have to say my general strategy uh, is the same for all of the exams with a similar format. So the uh, upper actual exams are written exams and same as the CFA exam for level three. I can't remember level two was a multiple choice or written, but yeah. But then like for like the longer exam around like five, six hours, um, when there are a lot of um, volume and material, my study techniques were pretty much the same. So tip number one, avoid distraction. Uh, if you can, especially from social media. Like, did you know that my cell phone, I actually do not have a data plan until last year when my phone broke into a point that it could not connect uh, to Wi-Fi. So before that, I never had a data plan for my uh, cell phone. So what does that mean? That means that if I'm at a place that doesn't have Wi-Fi, I cannot access the internet. And so I will not be able to uh, procrastinate and go on YouTube and stuff to uh, do that. So I can focus and concentrate on my study. And also like I'm not active. I wasn't active on uh, social media at all. And even right now, like I'm only active because like I'm uh, having this channel. I want to connect to uh, you guys, to the com uh, community, to understand more about uh, what uh, can be uh, good and useful uh, content for you all. So that's why I'm uh, active for a purpose. But beside that or before that, I'm really not active on social media at all. So from that, I would say like it really helped to uh, make you less procrastinate in a way. So there are a few apps that can block the internet uh, that uh, you can try it out. So uh, I will list it here in the comment section for you check it out. And also like sometimes it's like uh, I would print out the material so I can read them off or uh, if not, I would download it into my tablet. And again, like just disconnect the data, disconnect the internet, the Wi-Fi. And so like you have less distraction and just focus on your study material. is know your study style. Are you the type of person that uh, study the best when you study in a group with other people? Or would you prefer to study by yourself? How about study in the morning, uh, during lunch, or in the afternoon, at night? And how about do you study better if you study uh, in small chunk throughout the day? Or you just want to focus, uh, just sit there for like four hours or eight hours and you can be most efficient and most focused that way. So what type of uh, study or learner, uh, study person or learner are you? So uh, just try out different uh, time of the day or different ways to uh, find out uh, what is best for you. So personally, I study the most, uh, like the most efficient when I have uh, consecutive days of study. So for back then for my actual exam, I actually would take a, a one week off. Uh, I think maybe even like 10 days before my uh, exam to just really concentrate and study cons uh, continuously at the end, really push myself the last push. Because like these, uh, the last 10 days or two weeks for me is the, the most important. That is where everything come into uh, place for me. I don't know. It's like one day I would wake up, look at all of my study notes and material and everything makes sense. It's just like a light bulb in my mind that connect the dot of the different study, uh, different material and content. Like I would say one of the challenge with uh, studying for these exams is the amount of volume you have to digest. So it's like, how can you connect them all? Because that is how, um, when you actually write the exam, some of the questions are going to be comprehensive, going to be linking different material. How can you recall the material? Uh, and, and that's like how, if you can actually form the thought 
from the different um, material aspects of design that's going to be very extremely helpful for you. So I would say like usually those form for me like the last two weeks of design when I have like my final study cheat sheets or summary, I look at it and just like one day it just like pop up and voila. So, so yeah, I have to say is like make sure you know what is your study style and uh, follow it through. Three is study early. I actually, for my university courses, uh, sometimes I'm a little bit arrogant back then and I feel like, oh, I can just study last minute and I still could do well. Um, but sometimes it's like because the material is uh, shorter and more manageable. So maybe like, oh, I can just stay up all night and I still can uh, uh, do well for the exam, but it didn't really work out for my last few uh, years. And I, and that's how I knew about it. Like everyone have their own uh, ability or capacity, I guess. So it's really useful and important that you start early in your study. So that way, like doesn't matter how much of the material is there. If you start early, you can be, you will be less overwhelming for sure. Cause like, yes, maybe you will be very, you can be very overwhelming at first when you say like, what? This is like 2,000, 3,000 pages that you have to read through and then how are you gonna roll, go through all these raw uh, volume uh, material. But like if you start early, you break it into small pieces, they will be much more manageable. And this is actually the same, um, like how you will approach things at work. Like when you're solving a problem at work, especially when it's a very complicated or a big problem, how can you solve it? The recommendation, uh, the recommended approach is always break it down, break it into smaller pieces so that you can work on it or you can solve each piece one at a time. And then once you have those, you can link them all together. And that's back to uh, what I commented earlier about like at the end, after I go through everything, I really um, try to connect the dots. How are they all linked together so they can make more sense to me. Four, that is to plan uh, your schedule and set out your goals for them. So what I mean is that uh, at the beginning, when I'm approaching each exam, so for each exam, I actually would uh, set out a schedule to be like, oh, how long do I want to go through uh, for the first reading? And then uh, how long would I take to review the material? And then the practice, uh, the final review, uh, so some more like that. So it's like, I would try to stick to the plan. Even so yeah, so I would say just like uh, plan out for your goal and schedule and leave some time for breaks or buffer as well because there will be time that you feel a little bit burnt out and there will be days that like there's certain things happen that maybe because of work, maybe because you get sick that you cannot uh, follow it through. So like that is why the earlier you start, the more buffer time you actually have. And uh, having the goal or the schedule would help you to uh, feel actually like feel even more motivated as you progress because you can see how much you have uh, accomplished and then like how much left you still have to go. So you feel like you achieve things uh, day by day, week by week, and it will help with your motivations and keep you going. So using for the first read through. There are a lot of things that I made understand and it's okay. Like I feel like a lot of concept and material sometimes is like if you continue going on and read through all the material, it can help supplement to like really uh, help you understand something that you do not understand earlier. I don't see there's a point in trying to understand every single thing at first because one, it's gonna take way too much time doing that. And uh, secondly, it's like, Passing exam, especially like the upper actual exams or the CFA exam, is about like knowing like all of the different stuff, but not you know you don't need to know everything perfectly. It's like you only need to know everything like seventy or eighty percent good enough, so that like you can uh, answer any type of questions, any type of um, material uh, information that they ask. But you don't need to get perfect in every questions either. Because again, there's a lot of volume and material for these design. So this, so that is why like in the first read through, I never try to understand everything. 
I just try to like absorb first, so like, oh, getting used to it, so I'm not feeling overwhelming, and I don't even uh, try to memorize anything at this point. I think there's no no use in this either, but I would take notes. So for the actual exams, I actually would uh, purchase uh, the study manuals, and I would make like notes separately uh, to accompany with like the study manual because like sometimes you know what you understand and what you don't understand. So uh, so that is how I would do things uh, before the first read through. Number six is know the exam format. Is it multiple choice? Is it written answer? Or is it a combination of both? And how are they graded? Is there a penalty if you get an answer wrong? Or um, there's no penalty in that? If so, then yeah, you want to make sure that you answer every question because then there's a chance that you get partial mark, especially if a written uh, answer is in. And then how long uh, is the exam? And is it paper-based or is it computer-based? Um, so like for the actual exam when it's, or the CFA exam when it's six hours, I actually practice writing things for that long. So knowing the exam format is really, is, uh, is really important. And like for the actual exam, upper exam, like with the society actuaries, they, they would have uh, like guidelines or tips on even like the question wording. Like it's just like they would have wording like is it explain is it contrast is it recommendation like knowing these keywords or key verbs uh and that help you how to answer the questions most effectively as well so that is again so it's very important to uh, read all of the information available on the official website about the uh, exam because they really they it's not like they want to fail you they want to help you pass they're gonna provide all of the different relevant and useful information so to give you a good chance of passing the exam so read all of the information that is available out there for your exams seven practice 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 it's very important especially at the end because the best way for you to know that whether you actually understand material or not is to try to answer the questions and recall or, and know like whether you get it right or wrong. So I think, uh, especially if you don't have much time to study for the exam, doing as much practice questions, uh, as much practice exam that you can uh, would be the most useful thing. And for me, I don't, I don't try to uh, do practice questions um, with uh, at the begin at least at the beginning. Um, with like memorizing everything either. Like I think it's okay if I look up in my notes and see uh, can I reference uh, knowing where the questions come from, from which material, which chapters and stuff. Because at least then I know that like, hey, I can answer the questions if I remember the material. It's very different when even if I have all the material and I still don't know the question. I think that is much more challenging. And sometimes that is what I feel sometimes with the uh, math questions. Sometimes it's just like, oh, maybe I still don't know how to solve the problem, even if I memorize stuff. So yeah, so that's why, like, I think at least at the beginning when doing practice questions or practice exam, it's okay to make it like an open book and take as much time as you can to really try to see that do you understand the question or the material enough for you to answer this question, uh, given that if you remember the material. And then, so like only at the end is the last two weeks is when I try to memorize everything that I need to know. In CFA level one exam, I actually had less than one month to study for it. It's not because I was procrastinating, but it was, there was a, I guess there was a more like a emergency crisis in Montgomery where it required us to work a lot over that. It was not, they didn't force me to work over time, but I thought it is an opportunity for me to do more uh, outside of my uh, normal level uh, response, current level, uh, current responsibility. And I wanted to do it. So that's why I had uh, very little time to study for CFA level one, but I knew most of the material already from my business background, uh, undergraduate education in uh, finance, and also from my corporate finance and ERM is uh, track from the uh, actual exams. So, I think when I did like, even just like, when I didn't have much time, I just did the practice exam right away, just to see how much material I already know. And I think at that time, like I was all close to half 
already. So, so then uh, I would just like do practice questions, uh, practice design uh, in the last like few weeks before the exam and memorization, of course, at that point in time. is make your own notes. I think uh, making your own notes would be uh, very helpful for you to uh, recall and to uh, memorize later on because you try to explain things uh, in your own words. So it will stick to your brain better. And uh, so for, like for the CFA exams, for example, like I purchased the Swizer uh, final summary notes, like it's three page, uh, double page. Uh, but then I would actually uh, write down more notes on them and uh, to like elaborate on different concepts or to like when I go through the exam or practice questions like whatever uh, I find I think like useful or helpful I would write them on like it makes it make it very busy but it works for me because like when I decide to memorize later this is everything that I'm gonna try to memorize for the exam about knowing well what you already know. So for me, there is no point in trying to uh, study new information and material, especially in the last few days before the exam. You know what you already know. So if you did not like study earlier and uh, you only have a few days left, it's, I think it's more important that like make sure that whatever you already know and study, you can recall them you can um, know how to apply them well and this is where like flashcard or your own notes uh, would be very useful uh, come into place for you to make sure that you remember uh, what you already know for the level two or level three cf exam it's like it's five page overall double sided that i remember for each of the exam so they the original have three pages and then i'm making another additional two pages to go with them to supplement what other information that I feel like is needed. So it's like memorizing 10 pages is much more manageable. So in a way like I can I actually can record like from uh, I, I don't say that I have a photographic memory either, but I actually can recall like, okay, this topic is actually on page three on the left side or this side or this side. And that is really helped me to record again the material. And I just focus on memorizing uh, these, the final summary and the like, final notes, just that. Just, like I don't try to memorize anything else beyond it. Whatever I need to know will be to, will be making it into my final notes that I remember. And the last tip that I want to talk about today is getting uh, adjust it and get well rest before your exam. What it means is, uh, let's say your exam schedule is uh, at 8 a.m. And if you know that you not an early morning and you have been a night hour uh, that you only wake up at night, then try to wake up earlier, at least like a week before the exam. So your body gets used to um, the exam time, the like waking up early for the exam day. So. I actually would try to like adjust my sleeping schedule so that I would sleep earlier and uh, get used to wake up earlier uh, for at least like the week before my exam so that I, I can make sure that the exam hours time uh, on the day it would be where I can focus and have a good rest or good sleep before uh, the exam day is again very important so it can help you relax so that you can stay more focused on the exam day so yeah, making sure that you take enough rest, you eat well, and you adjust to the study, uh, the exam hours on exam day is uh, very useful. And um, these days, um, maybe you can uh, choose which hours of the exam that you want to start. Uh, I don't know if that's true for the actual exam or the CFA exam, but like, at least that's how it works for my uh, uh, master uh, courses, like for the final exam, that I can choose the hours to have to have it proper. So I would choose like, during the time that I know I would have like decent rest and get used to my, my normal uh, routine in the morning and that I would uh, can stay focused the most during those hours. So not too late that I feel tired, but not too early either because I'm really not a morning person. And you know what? I actually uh, put the material, my final notes, uh, below my pillow and I sleep on it. <laughs> and 
this is definitely a superstition thing but you know what it makes me feel like hey maybe this will help my brain to uh, remember things and uh, this is funny but uh, michelle from uh, actuary l uh, she also does the same things so maybe it works Hopefully you find these tips helpful and uh, again for part one of the comparisons between the CFA and actuarial exams, check it out here. I will have another part addressing some of the Q&A questions regarding this topic uh, and uh, you can find the link is here once it's published and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.